Chamber break here. Today I am doing a scope tracking test. Basically down there is my uh, grade stick that we use for excavation to shoot grade uh, when you're laying pipe and doing dirt work. And basically the way it works is right now I'm uh, pointing down range. It's 100 yards away. I used a, a wheel to measure it. Um, a tape is even better, but anyway, it's 100 yards away. I have the stick out there between 10 and 20 feet uh, was what the, the stake actually shows. And what you do is you take this and you dial. I like to do it by tens and you watch your scope move from 20, which is where I have it out there on the stick, 20 feet, and it'll move it down to 17. Then you go back and you make sure that you are at 20 again. And then I go back and do 20 uh, mils and then I do 30 mils, which is six feet and nine feet. So basically this needs to be level, so I'll level that here in a minute. And we got quite a bit of wind, so that's gonna give me a little bit of a margin of error. But basically I'm gonna aim up there at 20, and then I'll go 30 mils, and that will bring me down to 11. And then I'll go back up and back down, as well as going on the Charlie, because the Charlie goes immediately from 20 to 11. Okay, so why do we do this? Uh, let's just use something simple for simple math. Let's just say one mil, is 36 inches at 1,000 yards. And one mil at 2,000 yards is 72 inches. Okay, so if I dial one mil, my scope is gonna point down 36 inches meaning that when I aim, my barrel will be up, okay? Now let's say that my scope has a 10% a drift or 10% margin of error, which is 3.6 inches. So when I dial, I dial, and if it's up or down, it could be either, it could be 39.6 inches or 32.4 inches. You know, it, the margin of error could be the same or it could drift. But let's just say that it moves it uh, 39 inches. Okay, so it's 39.6 inches. Actual. Okay. So my actual dial is 39.6 inches. If I were shooting a 10 inch target, okay, and this was 36 inches, was exactly dead center but mine shoots 39.6, then I hit the top of the target. Okay, so that's, that's assuming all other atmospherics are, are, are identical, or let's just call them zero. No wind, no nothing. All right, if for some reason your scope is a larger margin of error, you miss the target entirely. So that's why we do this. If you don't know what your margin of drift is, then you don't know what to adjust for. If you prove that your scope is always the same, let's say every time I dial one mil, it moves at 39.6 inches at a thousand, then I know that I don't dial one mil to hit a thousand. I have to dial less than a mil. And the same with 2,000 yards. So if my margin of error is 7.2 inches, okay, then my actual is 70, oops, 79.2 inches. Okay, so my scope moves 79.2 inches. If this is a two MOA target, it's 20 inches. The center of it's 10 inches. So once again, I just barely hit the target. If I'm off at all, I'm gonna miss it. So every time I dial 2,000 yards, I need to actually dial less than one mil if 
That's all my holdover is. And that's why we do this. Define the margin of error of your scope. A lot of what you pay for in a high value scope is actually this margin of error, the drift, to not occur or to occur at 1% or less. If you find a scope that has zero, uh, that's, that's what you're looking for, obviously. But when you pay a lot of money for scopes, they can take a lot of abuse from high caliber rifles and end up uh, not drifting. I also put my Charlie on, which is right here. And my Charlie is set at 30 mils and it attaches onto the end of my scope, which you guys have seen in previous videos, if you watch my videos. Um, and it will take and immediately give me 30 mils of elevation when I attach it. So if I'm pointing at 20 feet downrange and I snap this on, it should be exactly nine feet below that or 11 feet on the, on the grade stick. Now when I take it off, it should go right back to 20. If it's not, then that's a margin of error that the Charlie has. And you use that margin of error, if it's repeatable, to then calculate your ballistics each and every time. So there you go, a scope tracking test. You should also do a tall target test, which helps you not only tell if your scope is um, dialing correctly when you shoot, but can also help you see scope can't if you have everything level. It's really important that everything is level. Um, this is not in a fixed uh, bag, so I implemented um, a margin of error in there anyway because the gun's going to move some, but you be gentle when you repeat it and you figure out your data that way. Forward forever, backward never. Thank you. Enjoy.